Yo. Yo, Jordan Imp, this, this right here is crazy. I, I, I feel big, you know what I mean? Like, not, not big in the sense of weight, you know what I mean? Like, gaining weight up, nothing like that. Like, colossal, like, you know what I mean? Like. All right, guys, before we dive into our arm workout and our kind of day in the life kind of video, uh, this is a video we want to make for a while. It's about how to properly do a bicep curl, a cable curl, any kind of bicep curl. This one little trick will completely change the biomechanics of the exercise and ensure that you're doing it properly to get maximum benefit when doing it to really help grow those biceps. If you want nice peaking biceps, this is something that you have to do. As soon as I implemented this, I gained about an inch in my arms in about four months, which is incredible. I don't know if that'll happen for you, but this small change will make a big difference. So obviously the bicep is a pretty long muscle. If you have really good insertion points, it's gonna kinda come in from the shoulder all the way down to here. The better genetics you have, the longer this head will look. You'll see I have about two inches of gap here. Fortunately, I'm not overly blessed in that regard, but the longer, the better the muscle will look. Because the muscle's long, it needs to be stretched. So those half reppers, and we're using a PVC pipe here so I don't die out. If you're half repping like this, so I'm not stretching that bicep at all, I'm just working that peak portion, which isn't what you want. If you're overloading, that's another option, but all in all, you wanna make sure you're doing this exercise properly. So you wanna make sure you bring it down, right, to here. But this in itself is probably what a lot of you are doing, but this is not a full range of motion rep. Even here, this is not a full range of motion rep. What you wanna do is really drop those shoulders. Don't let your traps kind of have a lot of the load and a lot of the burden and be under tension, but drop them downward. So you can see here, now my bicep is in complete control. Now, once again, you wanna be careful with those elbows, because if you lift them too much, you're gonna bring in too much of the shoulder. So first and foremost, drop those traps, have this down by its side, have it nice and extended, but not to where your elbow's locked. And you can already see how much longer and extended my bicep extension is, sorry. So you can see it's extended all the way down and it's engaged. From here, you're gonna to wanna to squeeze up and get a big squeeze at the top. From this point, you can let the shoulders come up about an inch. This is actually gonna be a full range of motion. A lot of machines will mimic this, but technically you can get more of a squeeze if you bring it up to here, but at the risk of bringing that shoulder. So I like that middle compromise. So for me, a full range of motion is down here, up, and a little squeeze at the top, down. All the way down here, if you're not doing this, you're coming nice and low, and as obvious as it seems, it'll surprise people, and let that bicep head stretch out. This little portion right here is money. That's how you're gonna grow this bottom area and make it look like you got some thick arms. So let's demonstrate. So this is what I was doing before. Josh actually gave this tip to me. He's like, bro, you gotta check this out and try it. It's gonna change your training routine like crazy. So basically, I would just go like this. You know, you are firing up the biceps, but you're not doing too much. You think you're doing a lot, but you're not, right? And I made that same mistake. But the second I dropped my shoulders backwards, really postured myself, retracted my scapula, and allowed myself to go up, squeeze, and then go all the way down, it changed my training like crazy, a lot more intense, a lot more bicep engagement, and I feel like my arms are growing from that. Nice, all the way down, repeat. So, you guys gotta try this out. As Kyle said, changing from doing this and having everything outward to just this little kind of micro rep, even if you're doing full range here, versus putting all the tension on the bicep and dropping it down like this, keeping your elbows tight to your side, elongating those arms, and then stretching up, and then lifting those elbows just a little bit of an inch, get that final contraction. <sighs> will change the way you hit arms. Because here, we're really focusing on that negative, bring it all the way down, really extending, then here, we're getting our contraction and we're pushing it even more. That little lift, you're getting a little bit more. Now before everyone goes crazy and we get a million comments, this isn't the only way I curl, however, 90% of the time this is how I curl. If I'm doing a burnout, I'll compromise a bit, maybe I'll lessen the form a little bit, but all in all, changing your curls to this, I used to curl like 70 pound dumbbells, just swinging away. But now, you know, I'll grab 45s, 50s, and just squeeze, bring it all the way down. Because the second you put a lot of tension on that trap, you're just doing this smaller rep because it's lifting it up from there and it allows you to swing more. But when you drop it dead, that's all your arms. So just try that at home. Drop your traps down and then just try that and you're only working that arm. Implement this, let us know how it goes. So guys, this works best for cables because you can have everything by your side. With the dumbbell, there's obviously issues, especially if you start with a little bit of supination, it's gonna hit your sides. So you kinda have to start in front of you, but you wanna apply as much of the principle as you comfortably can to the exercise. You're not gonna always be able to do textbook form on every exercise, 
deadlifts when you're getting into that crazy 98% plus range of your PR, it's gonna break down a little, but if you guys are practicing and trying to do things to the best of your ability, implementing the rest of your workout, the results will show. So you guys will probably see with the hammer curls, I'm leaning a bit forward because my sides, my thighs are too big for me to drop the dumbbells like that, so I'll lean a bit in. But guys, this is a great thing you can do. Be conscious of what you're doing. Really focus on bringing it down, working the negative, and really focus on maxing out that squeeze at the top. Squeezing muscles is growing muscles, guys. I'm gonna show you guys our full arm workout. Let's go. So I'm on here. This is just like a casual chills day. I could definitely beat this right here easily. Let's go 550. Jeez. You'd have a, the highest one there. And yours ain't the same when the these are. Sunset sheets want to see the stars. Bunny branch, ran through and see Lamar. Rose, take one to the brain. Corvette, rolling up real many. Mixed jeans, pocket full of mixed greens. Big team, hit him with the chili while I came through in the clutch at the last shot. So now we're gonna go get our favorite meal, shawarma. <laughs> Out here at Amazing Shawarma in Scarbo, this is the best shawarma around. You guys gotta check it out. Get ready. you what it looks like on the inside but let's dig in oh look at that all that meat right there macros are pretty freaking dang good there's so much protein in here like we literally just came from the gym and we're gonna have this post-workout there's a lot of veggies there's tomato Josh is laughing at me for some reason pretty there's freaking lettuce. dang good bud. pretty freaking dang good um, and it's just overall fantastic so take a glory into bite, it. bro Yo, do you guys think Kyle should bulk to 200? We're so having a debate. Plan. I've never been 200 pounds. I've been 190, so we're debating. Josh is gonna do a lean bulk to about 220 or so, nice and slow. I go to about 200. Right now I'm about 172, so that's 28 pounds gained. That's definitely gonna be a dirty bulk, and we will potentially kind of compare, compare the differences, basically with Josh doing like maybe half a pound a week, if that, and I'm doing maybe two plus pounds with how much gain, uh, how much weight is gained from fat, muscle, strength, how you feel and stuff like that. And we'll do, we'll do DEXAs and here filming? Yeah. And we'll do like this legit, before and after photos, DEXAs of the whole bulk, of the whole cut. So we'll try to do a DEXA scan before, after, and then after the cut. So that'd be three of them. And like we'll get true stats here, measurements, everything. We'll really track someone who does a dirty bulk. Of course he's gonna put on more fat, but we wanna see who puts on more muscle at the end of the two. I think it'd be a cool experiment. What do you guys think? 